Today's video, we take a stand against the kaiju threat as we have a look at the Pacific Rim Uprising Guardian Bravo from the folks over at Diamond Select. It's been 10 years since the Battle of the Breach and the oceans are still but restless. Vindicated by the victory at the breach, the Jaeger program has evolved into the most powerful global defense force in human history. The PBDC now calls upon the best and the brightest to rise up and become the next generation of heroes. When the Kaiju threat returns, we will be ready. Designed for combat at range, Guardian Bravo wields the Alex 16 Arc Whip, a proto-metallic successor to the Chain Sword, and brings a new sophistication to the Chain Sword's whiplash move. This action figure features approximately 16 points of articulation and includes accessories exclusive to the select format, sculpted by Big Shot Toy Works. Let's go ahead and take the tape measure and figure out how tall Guardian Bravo is. I'm not going to take it to the top of its head. Instead, I'm going to take it to the back because these vents that stick out from the top of its torso are higher than, of course, his head. I'm going to go ahead and take the measurement there instead. And stopping it right there. The tape measure tells us that the figure from foot to this point right here stands 7.3 inches in height or in centimeters centimeters is specifically your thing. Uh, the figure stands 18.5 centimeters in height. And because you guys would ask for it, I'm more than happy to oblige. Here he is next to the other two kite, the other two Jaegers that we had a look at on this channel. On the left, the very impressive Obsidian Fury, my personal favorite from the set. Try not to get him to fall over. And on the right, we had the much smaller Titan Redeemer. Now, I thought that the Titan Redeemer and the Guardian Bravo look almost similar in height, but I guess you could say uh, chalk up the wind to Bravo here. A little bit taller solely because it's got these extra little vent ports on the top. My favorites from this particular wave, I would say clearly by a landslide, would be the Obsidian Fury, followed very closely with the Guardian Bravo. I just wasn't as big of a fan of the Titan Redeemer. For its accessories, it comes with the Alex 16 Arc Whip. It looks as impressive in plastic form as it did in the film, its go-to weapon of choice. Here, they've not only done a good job of sculpting, I like that they've given it a curl to it, so it's just not just a straight whip, but they've mixed a series of almost pastel blues, some darker blues and some whites in there as well that sprinkling the color the way that they did kind of gives it that glowing look really do like that it does have of course a handle in which it can hold it but here's the sad news the sad news that i'm about to break down for you guys for his other the other accessories including with guardian bravo comes with a series of closed fists yawn I'm not a big fan of closed fists unless you want to have, you know, it posed in such a way that it wants to box or uppercut or something like that. I normally would not go to closed fists. Okay, so then the other option is it does have a pair of relaxed hands. The other hand, I just so happened to already put in place. This would be the other copy of that, just on this side. And then it does also have a, a partially gripping hand. Now, this hand here is specifically intended for holding the whip. Now, in the film... Looking at it, I believe it only uses the whip on the one side, which I guess is accurate then for the figure. I wish, though, D Diamond Select had also given us a gripping hand on this side as well, say if I wanted to decide to put the whip over here instead. Changing out the hands, though, one thing I like, though, is that they've put this, this uh, shape right here. You can see it kind of curves down here, and it lines itself up perfectly with the forearm. I'll talk a little bit about that later because that does have some problems when it comes to moving the hands. But if you want to change out the hands, they're quite easily, you're just pulling them right out, a very long, chunky peg. 
and then you can replace it with the other hand that you want to use. Thumbsies, of course, rule of thumb, thumbsies always go in. There you go. And there's the interchangeable hand. Kind of wish, again, it could have come with a gripping hand so I could have done it on this side as well and not solely just relegating it to this side. But it's still pretty cool. You got to admit, that looks pretty cool to have a whip with uh, in its hand. Sadly, Fallen, Guardian Bravo in the film, one valiant last ditch effort goes leaping in the air with whip in tow, leaping against the very giant now merged kaiju that has, I think, three kaijus merged together. And the, uh, the Bravo, one valiant uh, leap, heroic leap, it ends up grabbing and whipping it through several buildings. And then that usually is, well, that was the end of its, its run as a Jaeger. But when, what purpose it served in the film, it was definitely one of the more impressive of the uh, of the Jaegers. It was one of my personal favorites, at least for what it did in the film. It had a lot more action and it did a lot more stuff. Titan Redeemer, I think, had the benefit of having, well, it had the big wrecking ball, but I think I dig the whip much, much more. So for the figure, I think the figure is a pretty good representation of how it looked in the film. I'm looking at the head sculpt, though. It kind of reminds me of something I would either see from G.I. Joe, like a, a Viper helmet, or it kind of reminds me of Tarantulas from Transformers Beast Wars. I don't know why I get that vibe when I look at it. It is a neat looking head. Um, unfortunately, I find I can't do too much with it. I mean, I can rotate the head slightly, but there's just not enough to get in there and, and move it. You certainly can't move it up and down, which is unfortunate just because the head is so close to its torso. Unlike the problems that I had with Titan Redeemer, I don't have nearly any problems when it comes to the paint here of Bravo. Bravo's got some really nice paint work done here. For starters, it's got this glorious sort of purple crimson color, almost like a purple burgundy. And then it's got these nice scratched etchings here where you can see the paint has just sort of chipped away. It's got CB049 on the one side. It's got some really nice white trim happening there. Between the white and the crimson, I also feel like I'm getting the vibe of a Gundam. It kind of gets that same sort of look to it, at least for me it does. The back's got some neat, neat looking details and little cool sculpts happening all in there. This I thought wanted to move. I was certainly just crazy for thinking that. It felt like these could actually move back and forth, but there's nothing really from a component standpoint that actually can move here on this Jaeger. You got some additional printing that's happening here on the backs of its arms, PBDC to be exact. And you've also got the CB49s happening on the back of its thighs. It's got some great sculpting here on the on the legs. Um, the heels also have their own independent articulation. Just kind of adds to the additional posability that you can do with this, which we'll talk about in a second. I'm very happy with the paintwork here. I guess it really, it's not the fault necessarily of Diamond Select, because they're really just translating the design of the movie to plastic. Uh, Titan Redeemer, I just found was a little boring, to be all honest, with the green and the gray. Here you got some nice pops of white, and again, that nice red color. And some dark grays happening in there, and again, the silvers, kind of more like a gunmetal coloring. Certainly more poseable as well unfortunately for the fact it doesn't have that in the head. It does make up for it everywhere else. For example, its torso is on a good ball joint allowing you to do this. You could do that until the cows come home. I mean, that would pretty much make for a very boring afternoon, but just to show you, you can certainly do that. Arms move forward, arms move back, arms move slightly out. Um, this is sort of one of the problems I have with the figure. It doesn't quite move its arms out very well. The arm joint is actually down here. So if you have, for example, let me just show you here. If you have this joint, and luckily I can move these up. If you have the joint moving forward this way, you have to literally move this back. If it's stuck too far forward, like this one is, this one you see don't, doesn't have that problem. You can then move the arms back and forth and you can also hinge them back and forth this way. But if the hinge joint is happening in all the wrong places, like this joint is actually up here, it's sideways, so I can't do it the same way as I could over here. It would have to be angled down. This one, unfortunately, is angled to the side. It does have a swivel on the bicep. It has a single hinge in the elbow, which doesn't give you a whole lot of clearance, unfortunately. Um, you get a nice straight arm, but when it comes to bending the arm, that's as best as you're going to really get out of it. 
the hands also swivel back and forth. Um, this is what I was talking about before. See how the arm guard goes right into the shape of the palm. Unfortunately, that means that when you are rotating it, you're always sort of rubbing against it. And a lot of times you have to almost pull the hand further out for it to get a full rotation happening all the way around. And then you kind of have to pop it back into place. The legs split out. You get a forward and a back on the leg. You get a bend at the knee. Nothing in the lower leg to rotate, but however, you do get foot articulation. This can rotate back and forth. Slight ankle rocker, not too much happening there. And then you've also got this interesting hinge on the back of the, of the, uh, the heel here. It's separate, and actually it's a little looser on this figure. I can't imagine that be the case on everybody's, but I noticed that it's really, really loose, excessively loose here, which is not really so much an issue because you're putting weight on it anyways. Oh, and then of course we can't forget there's articulation here in the shoulders as well. Yeah, I do dig Guardian Bravo. It has sort of silly problems with it. It's not something that is a complete write-off for a figure. My biggest problem is the way that they've hinged the shoulders here. If you don't have that hinge right, yeah, I know, I know I said it already, but it does cause problems when it comes to rotating the arms. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with this figure. It's not my favorite. That goes to Obsidian Fury, but it definitely is my second favorite of this current wave. You know, it's a bit of an irony that I took a break from looking at the Obsidian Fury and Titan Redeemer to finally having a look at Guardian Bravo. I think it was about a month or so between reviews. I say that because last night they aired Pacific Rim Uprising again on TV, and it was my chance again to watch the film. I will admit, it's not as good as the first one. The first one has a heart to it that I feel like the second one doesn't have. It still is a fun, action-packed film that watches where I can watch giant robots fighting giant monsters. Of the giant robots, at least, the Jaegers, my favorite was the Guardian and Bravo, at least for action. Giving it a whip was a great idea, and sort of whip was ultimately the downfall of the Jaeger. Arrogantly, it flung itself towards the giant kaiju, now merged with several kaijus together. I don't know what it was expecting, but ultimately, it fell at the hands of the kaiju, but it was still a fun, neat-looking robot. Diamond Select, in its true service to what they've done with the previous releases, has put a lot of care into the Guardian Bravo. I think it has better paint than Titan Redeemer. Titan Redeemer, I just find, is sort of bland of the three figures. I don't think this one is my favorite. That, goes, that title goes to Obsidian Fury. But definitely my second favorite is Guardian Bravo. It's got some neat elements to it. And it definitely is a little bit more poseable than what you could do with the Titan Redeemer. So some fine work happening there. And thanks again to the folks over at Diamond Sleft for producing these figures. If you guys are interested in picking up any one of these for yourself, you should be able to find them now at your local comic book store. And if what, you can't find a comic book store, www.comicshoplocator.com. You can put in your zip code or postal code and bingo bango, you can find a comic book store in your area. No, I'm not sponsored by Comic Shop Locator. <laughs> Today, though, we were having a look at the Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising. This was Jaeger Guardian Bravo, a really neat-looking figure. Definitely my second favorite from the wave. If you want to go back and have a look at some of my earlier Guardian, well, not Guardian Bravo, but my certainly my older Pacific Rim figure reviews, there should be a whole playlist for you. I've noticed with YouTube lately, or at least I only found out lately, you can only have so many playlists. Ultimately, that means that when I said before I have playlists of certain figure reviews, you may go back and not be able to find those because any new playlist erases the previous ones. Oops, I didn't know that. Now I do. So if you can't find a playlist for Pacific Rim, you can most definitely, though, find a playlist for the larger Diamond Select, which covers all the reviews that I've done for them. If you guys want to check that out that way. Make sure as well you swing over to the homepage. Why not? When you're finished this video and see the videos in the video section, see if there's anything you may have missed along the way. For all the stuff that I'm posting on a regular basis, there is a very good chance that you may have missed out something. You should be able to all find it on the homepage. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.